In this video, we're going to be tackling the leak code question, top K frequent elements. And the algorithm that we're going to be using to solve this is of the lesser known, shall I say the esoteric type, because you very rarely hear about it. And for good reason. You see, the bucket sort is pretty much the bucket hat of algorithms. There are very, very few times when you should ever be wearing a bucket hat. You should pretty much only be wearing a bucket hat if you're in the jungle and you need to protect your skin from the sun. And we're in one of those situations right now because the bucket sort, it shines in one area. And that is, you guessed it, keeping track of frequencies, sorting things by frequencies. How exactly is this going to work? Let's just take a look at an example. LeetCode is going to give us an array that looks something like this. It's going to have a bunch of numbers inside of it. And they're also going to give us K. K pretty much means the number of frequencies that you want to return. So the top most frequent numbers in this case are going to be one and two because there's three ones and there's two twos and there's only one three. And here's how we're going to build this algorithm. It's actually not that complicated at all. It comes in three steps. The first thing that we're gonna do is we're going to build what's called a frequency map. And a frequency map is about as easy as it gets. Basically, what we're gonna do is we're going to iterate through every single number in the array. And each number that we come across, we're going to keep track of its frequency. But how are we going to do that? Well, we're going to put the frequency in what's called a key value pair. For each one that we find, we're going to, like I said, keep track of the frequency. And each time that we come across, let's say one, we're going to update our frequency just like this. So uh, one occurs say, three times. So we'll go ahead, put a three here for our frequency for the one. Then when we get to the two, we're going to do the exact same thing. We're going to keep track of the frequency. So two, two occurs one time, two occurs, let's see here, two times. And then once we get to three, that is the final number. And our frequency is just going to be, you guessed it, one. Once we get done with the frequency map, we can finally move on to what's called a bucketing. And bucketing, once again, is an incredibly simple process. So in order to bucket, what we're going to do is we're going to take this frequency map that we just created. Remember, on the left is the number, on the right is the frequency. And we're going to iterate over the number. So we'll go one, two, three. And for each number, we're going to store it in an array by its frequency. What exactly do I mean by that? Well, arrays are index space. We have zero, one, two, three. And as we iterate over these values, we're going to store them by their frequency based on the index. So we get to one. What we're going to do is we're going to store it in the three. Then when we get to two, two appears two times. What we're going to do is we're going to store it in the two index. And finally, three appears one time. So you guessed it, we're going to store it in the one index. But Keep note of something very important. If you notice here, I'm storing these values in an array, and an array inside of an array. And that's because multiple numbers can be stored with, let's say, the three frequency. So we could also have a two in here, but thankfully our example is very easy, so we only have one number. And finally, with this array, we can quickly find the top K element by iterating backwards. So we want to find the two top elements. So what we're going to do is we're going to iterate backwards through the array. And when we get to the two highest frequencies, we're just going to place them in an array. So the one appears three times and the two appears two times. So those are the two numbers that we are going to return in our algorithm. And that's pretty much it. So let's go ahead, let's hop into IntelliJ and let's code it. So we are inside of IntelliJ and the very first thing that I'm going to do is create a Java class and I'm going to call it solution. This solution class is going to house our method and this method that we are about to create is going to be public of course. It's going to return an integer array and we're going to call it top k frequent. 
and ToeJ is going to do a lot of the heavy lifting for us, but just note that for the parameters, we are taking in an integer array called nums, and we're taking in an integer called k, and that's going to be the number of frequencies that we want to return. So this is going to come in three stages. In our very first stages, we want to keep track of our frequencies, and we're going to do this with a hash map. This hash map is going to be incredibly simple. The key is going to be an integer and the value is also going to be an integer and we're going to go ahead and import that. Also, I'm gonna call this frequency map just to be a little bit more explicit because a map could, be, could mean anything. Next thing that we need to do is we need to populate this hash map with the frequencies. And the way that we're gonna do that is with a very simple for loop. We don't even need to use a fully fledged for loop. We can just use a for each here. And what we're going to do is we're going to populate it with the frequencies. Now, how is this actually populating frequencies? It's a put and here is the key. This is the number inside the array. And also notice right here is the plus one and that's what's going to do the initialization of the number and also do the incrementing. So next thing that we're going to do is we're going to do our bucketing. Now, hold on, because this is going to look really crazy right here. You may have never seen anything like this before. You may have though, who, who knows? But what this is, is this is an array with nested with a nested list inside of it. So array with a nested list. And the reason that we're going to do that is because remember, we need an array to keep track of the indexes. But inside of the array, we also need the ability to keep track of multiple numbers. And a list is going to allow us to do that very easily. Also, we're going to initialize this array with the nums.length, not the uh, map size. So I'm going to say nums.length plus one. And that's going to initialize the buckets with the amount that we need, which is going to be the length plus one. The next thing that we need to do is we need to iterate over the frequency map, over the hash map that we just made. And we need to add the frequency to the appropriate index in the buckets array. And we're gonna do this with the full reach because with the full reach, we can assign nice little names to the key and the value instead of having to endure the indexes and the nums that come along with uh, iterating over a hash map with a regular for loop. But before we do any add, we need to check if there's null wherever we're trying to add because we're going to have to store multiple values. And in order to store multiple values within this frequency index, what we're going to do is we're going to have to add an array list beforehand because if we try to add to something that's not there, we're going to get a really nasty error. So we finally got the buckets taken care of. Here's where we can actually do the return of the top K words. And we're going to go ahead and create a data structure that's going to return multiple values for us. And we're going to do this within the form of a list. So in this case, we're not gonna be able to get away with an abstracted for loop. We're gonna have to bring out a fully fledged for loop because we're gonna have to iterate from the back to the front. And we're also going to have to stop at K elements. So we're gonna have to assign I to buckets.length minus one because we want to start at the back, but we also need to create logic that's going to control the back to the front movement and remember the alligator always moves wherever its mouth is pointing when it comes to for loops and the mouth is pointing to the left because we want to move from the back to the front but remember we need to stop at k but how are we going to produce logic that's going to stop at k well we're going to say when result dot size is less than k and that's going to stop when we get to k elements and of course we need we need to decrement because we're moving backwards so very similar to before, we're gonna have to do some null checks, but instead of checking for null, we're going to be checking if it's not null because we don't want to try to add null to our result. We only want to store wherever frequencies are occurring. So we're going to say result.addAll because we're, it, we're adding a list and also we're going to add that element and the K is going to control adding those two top elements instead of trying to add everything 
And finally, we're going to go ahead, let IntelliJ do all of the work. And we're going to turn this from a list into an array. So that's pretty much it. So I'm going to go ahead, get out full screen here. Let's toss this into leak code and see what we get. So I'm going to go ahead, take this right here. I'm going to toss in all of this code. Go ahead, run our test, see what we get. So run the test. Thank you, God. Test cases are accepted. Let's check our time and space complexity. So time complexity in this case is going to be linear, which is a little bit dubious, but I'd still let's say it's probably the best time complexity you're going to get for this question. And our space complexity is linear as well too. Congratulations. We have nailed the interview. Anyways, hope that you guys enjoyed this. If you did smash that like button, smash that subscribe button. And as always, thank you for watching.